welcome to Fishing Western Australia. On today's show, we're going to be visiting the Kimberley, plus a lot more, and uh, you might see a bit of this as well. But let's have a look at what else is on today's show. <laughs> Today we head just off Fremantle for whiting and flathead on light tackle. We take you deep into the Kimberley to show you the gaps, and you'll see some mind-blowing mangrove jack action from the rapids. And they won't flop around. When I got my very first boat, I had no idea how to fish from it. So I came out here in a Coburn Sound to this spot, Parmelia Bank, just off the end of Woman's Point. Today we're going to look for King George Whiting, and I'm here with my good mate, the pie smuggler, Pommy Day from FishingWA.com. You're a bit of a KG specialist, mate, aren't you? No, oh, I used to be, but I haven't fished for a long, long while. A long, long while. That's about a week in his language. <laughs> Today we're going to look for the KGs in amongst the weed, in amongst the sand patches. Fresh bait's the best, so I've brought along my Yozuri jig. We're going to chuck that out the back while we start off fishing with the packet squid. And if a fresh one comes along, all the better because they just love that. So let's get into it, mate. I'll all chuck right. the jig out. We'll go fishing. The water that you're looking for is about four to five metres deep with big patches of sand and weed. Anchor right along the line of weed and cast into the sand. The bud member. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's a beautiful trumpeter. Gee, they fight hard, don't they? I tell you what, they are really a hard fighting fish. It's a pity you can't eat them. There we go. The bass player, the drummer, and a few more trumpeter. We'll have a band. We'll have a band. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> now, I've had a squid jig just over the side of the boat because we need some fresh bait and I've got him. Or her, actually. It's a female. Oh, it's a good one, too. They're so prehistoric and they're fantastic bait. So, Dangling a squid jig over the side of the boat. I've got a little pink one here. Yo, Zuri's are great. It's my secret weapon. Now, with a bit of fresh bait, I reckon the King George are definitely going to follow now. I'll show you how to put on this squid. I've got a lovely bit of fresh stuff here. Have a look at that. Nice and clear. That's the best type of squid to have. I'm feeling real confident now we've got the fresh squid. King George just love it. Just thread it on a few times through the hook. They'll go this. Once through the finger, there you go. Ouch. That's as easy as it is. Just wrap it around a few times and they'll come along and bang. Nice big King George, I reckon. I think I've lost my bait. No, I haven't. Oh, there's a good fish. Good fish. Oh, yes. Could it be? Oh no. Oh, yes. oh no. I don't want to even. I don't want to show it. I don't want to show it. You got a blowfish. That's the booby prize. That's the booby prize, mate. Oh, lovely. Nice crumbs. Oh, they're beautiful. The way you can tell if you've got a King George going is because of the way they actually pick up the bait and run with it they surge away with your bait. And so if you feel a little pull go away, you can be sure it's a King George. Now, Dave over here is using the secret weapon, pre-mixed burley in the form of pellets. It's impregnated with oil, but chook pellets will do. This stuff's great because the oil gets in the water, it attracts herring around as well onto the surface. So in about 20 minutes or so, we're gonna have a party going on right here. Okay, it's not a king. Yes, yes it, it is. is. It's a King it's George. A king. It's a skip. It's a herring. Oh, we'll get it right eventually. That's a big one though, isn't it? <laughs> They've all started to come into the trail now. There's a bite. Oh, he's got some weight, Dave, eh? Oh, you're on two. Hang on. Oh, it's a big flathead. Have a look at this. Oh, beautiful. That's a beauty. Oh, and you've got of. his son. <laughs> son of. Look at that. They're very light colour out here on the sand. Doesn't make them any less sharp though. Give me the rag. There you go. Oh, oh he got my hook. What about you, Dave? Oh, eh? well, I can get this one out. Well, I'll get this one out without getting it. There you go. That's Could you make that head any flatter? <laughs> Mate, it is a flat head. <laughs> flat head now. Oh, you... <laughs> there you go. He'll have a think about it and off he goes. He'll grow to a much bigger fish. Yes. That's yes. Good yes. Good yes. Good fish. That could be a KG, I reckon. It's going off. It's having put up a good fight. Oh, taken line. What on earth is it? 
Oh, gee, I hope I get this one in. What's it doing? I can't get off the bottom. Oh, here it comes. Oh, wow. Very nice. This spot's turning it on for us. How's that? Hey, I told you they get bigger. This is a silver trevally, but in the south of WA we call them skippy. This is most probably because in the States they call some trevally skipjacks. And listen to the grunting. All trevally like to make that little grunting noise. What's that? You'd like to go back? Okay. Here we go. Bye bye. Oh, KG. it's a beauty KG, all right, he is the specialist, he's the man. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dave, and I got one too. Oh, I got a fish going out. It's all going off now. I wonder if I got a King George. Yeah, I got one, I don't know if it's a King George or not. Tell you what, it's fighting hard. Uh, I won't tell you what I've got. We'll just have a look at your King George, I think. That's a beauty. It's a nice fish. Oh, wow. Give everyone a look at that in the sun. Isn't that pretty, eh? Oh. <laughs> Well, I hope you got a good look at that one because he wasn't coming back. Okay, Steve, what is it? Oh, oh it's a herring. Oh, it's a herring. Oh, it's a good one too, actually. It's a big one. Is it? Yeah. That's a big one. Big and mate. Nice work. Ow! <laughs> is well, there anything you, that's not going to spike me you today? You might as well take them all off since they get spiked every day. I know. I'm a pin cushion today. That's How's that for a herring, eh? That's good. That's a ripper. He's gonna go, he's gonna go, he's gone. <laughs> trick release. Uh, New trick. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. <laughs> As a spot, you can't complain about this place, can you, eh? No, we've had a good time. How many fish are we caught? We've got oh, herring, we've got King George. We came here for King George, but we ended up with more flathead. We've got a King George. Right, you've got a skippy. We've got Two lots skippies. of smingy redfish, <laughs> some blowfish, plenty of trumpet up. <laughs> <laughs> Parmelia bank, mate. Off good Perth. Fun. You can't go wrong here, Absolutely. can you? Exactly. A few more fish and we're off, I reckon. For more information about this segment, log on to fishingwa.com and choose the fact sheet number you see on the screen. If you don't have the internet, iNet can get you online today. During this series of Fishing Western Australia, we bring you great tips and fishing action, but we also want to show you the far northwest of this state that few people are ever privileged to see. We start our journey in the Buccaneer Archipelago and this amazing place called the Gaps. It features sets of enormous cliffs that act as a gateway to the calmest saltwater lagoon we'd ever seen. We were told that some awesome fish live in these lagoons and it didn't take much persuasion to get the pommel myself into a dinghy and heading through the mighty cliffs in search of big fish. The problem was, there's only one way in and one way out. The tide was falling rapidly and we had about half an hour of sunlight left. Now Steve, we're inside the gaps now and just sticking straight out the back and we'll troll around right around the edges where the water's starting to rush out. And you reckon these spearhead lures are the go? Yeah, the spearheads work really well because they're really tight. So have it quite long out the back. It's got to be really long out the back. Okay, we'll leave a little line out. Okay. And the little eddies in the water. Yeah. What's that? What's creating those? Basically, this is all landlocked now, and the water is obviously rushing out that quick, and it's only the way out is through the gaps. So we're really we probably should be fishing around those eddies, yeah? Yep. We're just going to make, about to go in this lagoon now. And what do you expect we're likely to get in here? Oh, I just got a big tap then. Big tap. Um, we could get some good trevally in here. Some good trevally, probably some jacks. Oh, just got hit again. Is it? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on. Oh, yes, yes, a solid fish too. That's probably a trevally, see? I'll just mind Oh, it in. actually, it doesn't feel like a trev. No. No, Could it's... be a nice jack. It's not head shaking. What is it? Oh, it's a Spanish flag. There you go. So, buenos dias, senor. Welcome to the Kimberley. Welcome to the Kimberley. <laughs> there you go. So, it's so, di so diverse that you could catch literally anything in here. Now, you may remember from our last series, that Spanish flags make... <laughs> That's a great assist. They make great gymnasts because they go right over the engine and he scored a 10 out of 10. <laughs> right, let's get back in. Straight out the back again, Steve. Look at those cliffs, mate. There's some pretty straight rocks there. It's made now straight, they look like books, don't they? It's almost like a big jigsaw puzzle that someone's put together. Yeah. And that hole right there, mate, what do you reckon that was? That's where the uh, cinema used to be. So they used to sit there like in ancient times watching Mad Max. And yeah, that's what sit in the water. Come on, come on! Whoa, Trevally! Trevally! 
Oh, that's a nice gold spot, I think. The big ones at the back there, Steve. Oh, here you go. Oh, here's the first good fish for the day. He's heading for the snags. Just seen the fish following mine, they were about yeah. big. The, the second that we went through that area. Okay, I can take him from out. As you've seen before on the show, Trevally don't give up quickly. So with the fading light, I couldn't afford to give the fish an inch or a chance to dig in sideways and head for the mangrove roots. Oh, I don't half go. Yeah, I don't know. What is it? It's either a gold spot or a golden, I think. Now, I'm working my rod tip quite close to the water because Trevally will circle at this stage. Certainly doing that. Whoa! And uh, <laughs> he's taking me all over the boat. So the objective is to keep him away from the prop. Actually, he might go three kilos. Just looking at him. I'd say it's a gold. A gold. Might be a golden. It's a golden trev. Leader. Okay. Get him on the top. A golden trevally landed in this water was truly a special moment for me. Okay. Ooh. Beautiful. Now they kick now, they kick there. No, they what? You got him? Yep. No drowns. There you go. Beautiful fish. It's Mick Jagger. Revisited. Revisited. There you go. Took that spearhead very, very securely. We quickly released the fish and fired up the engine for a mad dash through the gaps and back to the waiting Kimberley Explorer. It all happened so fast that the sheer beauty of the place didn't sink in until a few hours later. We'll never forget the gaps and just how calm and eerie the whole area was. It was honestly like another world behind those cliffs and we all hoped that someday we'd return again. Join me and Steve after the break to see what we pull out of this huge river. We were ready for more fast Kimberley action the next morning, so we headed as far upstream in the Prince Regent River as we could to where the freshwater runoff meets the start of the river. Where the water's coming down, there's this little rock ledge and a few rocks coming in at right angles. Now, it's fast water, but there's a calm pool. Now, if any fish are going to be in here, and the skipper of the Great Escape says they've caught some barra here, they're going to be right in that pool. Yes! Yes! Yeah. Yes, I am. I don't think it's a barra, though. Oh, he spat it. Let's have another go. Oh, well. The hookup on the first cast was pretty encouraging, and it looked like whatever fish that was had been sitting in the eddy right near the wall. We cast over the eddy and brought our deep-running Rapala lures back through the slack water until Marshy hooked up. Go mate, go. We haven't seen it yet. I just cast that law straight in the where Steve was working, where he was working. Oh, it's, a it's a beautiful mangrove jack. He's a big one. I've just seen him. I need that net. See? Good stuff. Good stuff. Here he comes, Steve. Oh, that's a corker. Thank you. Okay, mate, you take the controls. I'll sort him out. Now that fish, folks, we just put it back in. We had a bit of a drama because I was driving at the time, hooked the fish, as always. And then Steve had to get the controls. His rod was snagged and we're in quite fast water here. So we've got the second cameraman to jump on. And now he's taking us. And I hope he could drive too. He could drive a camera, so I hope he can drive a boat. Hold on! Here we go. Oh. <laughs> now this, like this is better than whitewater rafting! <laughs> <laughs> In the current, <laughs> this fish is going all over the place. I have to say, this is some of the most exciting fishing I've ever done. Valley, I don't know what sort of fish this is, mate, but it knows where the current is, that's for sure. It's another jack. It's actually not that big. They're strong though, aren't they? 
See how different he is this time, Steve. He's a lot. Uh, he's not as red as the last one. No. I tell you what, yours must have gone like a horse because this isn't anywhere near as big. I got his dad. <laughs> his dad was always stronger. Barbless hooks once again, straight out. See how easy that was? Now he's flopped himself into the net, so rather than me picking him up and stressing him, I'm just gonna push him out of the net, let him go, and away he went. These walls are pretty steep, mate. I hope we don't crash into them. Yeah, I'm you on. on. He's on. In the rapids, too. Go for it. <laughs> In the rapids. It's like Atlantic salmon, mate. You've done that before. This is just like Norway. Yeah, Marshy, sure. Just like Norway, except for the 38 degree temperature, the lack of snow, no skiers, no Vikings, oh, and a few more crops as well. Oh yeah! Oh, what one too? And that, they love that fast water, Steve. Oh, they're right in there. I thought they might have been on the side, but it's fast. when you put it in the fast water they go off. Yeah. And this one's so small, and the water's very fresh here. So tell me that isn't hooked up. Oh, Just that's aggression. It. That is absolute aggression. Absolutely. And here's another one. Right in the water now. You can see him. Come on, fella. We'll let you go. That's a nice size, Steve. That's a big one. A big maroon coloured mangrove jack. And uh, what a fabulous fish to be pulling out of this white water. Now I'm just going to change my lure to a fluoro one now because the water's quite dirty here or it's quite green because it's running quite fresh. Dead simple knot for this. You have to do all these fancy knots. If you're not using a swivel, just make a little granny knot in your leader like that. So that's all you need. And then through the end of the lure, just put your line through into the granny knot. Pull it up so you've got, looks like that. And then just make a half hitch or a, another knot like that down. And then pull them together. Okay. Pull that little tag like this. All right, cut the end off. Shouldn't really use your teeth. And that's it. You've looked a good fish, Steve. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure this ain't a barra, mate, but it hasn't jumped. Ah, uh, it hasn't jumped. It's probably a good size jack, mate. It's putting a decent bend in the rod. Shall I get the net or not yet? No, that's jinxing me, mate. <laughs> Wait till I see the leader and then get the net. Okay. Ooh! Now you see when he surged off there? I just dropped the tip down. Nice, Jack. He's not that big. Uh, no, I've got him sideways. Ah, that's that's right. always a bit of a trick, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Trick for beginners, that one. Come on, away from the boat, away from the boat. They've gone into, believe it or not, they've gone into the calm water. Now I'm going to show you here why I always advocate barbless hooks. That one's free, that one's not. Out it comes. Stop down. Okay, this one's in, out it comes. Now see how simple that was? Three trebles, straight away, out they come, and you're left with mangrove jack in good condition. And back he goes. And I'm on now, Steve. Oh. They're so tough. Here it comes. There's actually a bit of a pool forming here now. Big jack. Yeah, he's not bad. Again, using barbless sat like Steve was using, the hooks just fall out the fish. And he's just got it tucked away there, and we just, there you go, look. And don't forget, just squeeze them at the back of the head there, and they won't flop around. Beautiful little Jack, Kimberly style. Well, mate, I can't remember the last time I worked so hard but had so much fun. I can see that, Steve. You got a bit of a sweat on. And how good is the second caravan, Belly? Belly, eh? Glad we brought him along. <laughs> he runs the boat even better than he runs the camera. <laughs> so, mates, uh, that way, I think, there might be a few barra left in this waterway before we get back to the boat for the night. Don't forget... If you can't find the fish, check out the website.
fishingwa.com for all the latest reports, reviews, articles, there's tackle, secret hotspots, there's everything on that site for the whole fishing fraternity. So don't forget, if you're interested in fishing, fishingwa.com. Don't it. There we go. On our next show, we're going to feature the fantastic Point Sampson region, where you'll marvel at the variety of fish you can catch. And we'll take you on an unusual fishing trip in Perth. Well, that's it for this week of Fishing Western Australia. We hope you enjoyed the show. We've had a great time making it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Fishing Western Australia.